Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Last rites of veteran Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister Sheila Dixit to be performed this afternoon with full state honors. Over 7 crore 32 lakh farmer families receive first two installments of 2000 rupees each under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. Countdown for India's second lunar mission Chandrayaan 2 set to begin this evening. Launch of the landmark mission from Sri Harikota scheduled at 2:43 p.m. tomorrow. In Japan voting underway for election for the upper house of parliament and in badminton PV Sindhu faces Japan's Akane Yamaguchi in the women's singles final of the Indonesia Open in Jakarta. Last rites of veteran Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister Sheila Dixit will be performed at the Nigam Bodh Ghat this afternoon. She will be accorded a state funeral. Dixit passed away yesterday at a private hospital in the national capital after suffering cardiac arrest. Prominent leaders continue to pay their respects to Sheila Dixit. Veteran BJP leaders L.K. Advani, Shushma Swaraj and former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Omar Abdullah today visited her residence in the city. Yesterday several leaders including Prime Minister Narendra Modi and UPA Chairperson Sonia Gandhi paid the last respects. Her body was kept at the Congress headquarters today where a large number of people including party leaders paid their homage. A tribute The Delhi government has declared a two-day mourning in the national capital as a mark of respect to the 81-year-old Congress leader. The three-time chief minister is credited with giving the national capital its modern look. Known as a warm and affable politician, Sheila Dixit carried out massive infrastructure development of the city during her tenure. She served as Delhi's chief minister for 15 years from 1998 to 2013. With VM Rao, Anuja Bhardwajan, AIR News, Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today expressed condolence over the death of former Delhi BJP President Mange Ram Garg. He said Mange Ram Garg had a deep connect with Delhi and that was seen in the manner in which he selflessly served the people. In a series of tweets Mr Modi said that Garg played a pivotal role in strengthening BJP in the national capital and added that the good work by him will continue to be remembered for years. BJP working president JP Nadda and other party leaders also condoled the passing away of Garg. Mange Ram Garg was ailing and breathed his last this morning at a private hospital in the city. His body was kept at Delhi BJP office with several leaders and workers paid floral tributes to the departed leader. Over 7 crore 32 lakh farmer families across the country have received the first two installments of 2000 rupees each under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana amounting to 14646 crore rupees. Official sources said Uttar Pradesh with over 2 crore 20 lakh farmer families topped the list followed by Andhra Pradesh with 72 lakh and Maharashtra 50 lakh farmers PM Kisan envisages to cover approximately 14 crore 50 lakh beneficiaries across the country subject to exclusion criteria Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath today met family members of victims of Sonbhadra shooting incident and assured them all possible help from government He also met family members of the victims and listened to the demands. A correspondent reports that the chief minister reached Uma village this afternoon along with DGP and chief secretary of the state to meet family members of the victims. Villagers put forward the demands to chief minister at a meeting. The chief minister will also go to district hospital Sonbhadra where he will meet injured persons. He is scheduled to address a press conference in Sonbhadra later today. Ten people were killed and several sustained injuries on Wednesday in the shooting incident at Uma village. 29 persons have been arrested in this connection, including the prime suspect. BJP working president JP Nadda has called upon the party workers to follow the footsteps of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Addressing the Maharashtra State Executive Meeting in Mumbai today, Mr Nadda said, a new political culture has developed because of Prime Minister Modi. Attributing the success of Ayushman Bharat scheme Mr Nadda said the former health minister said it was the political will of Mr Modi which enabled the launch of such a huge scheme in the country Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu today called upon the medical professionals with Indian origin who are working in other countries to adopt villages and develop primary health services in India he asked them to be partners with the government in developing primary medical services across the country 
He was speaking at the Global Healthcare Summit 2019, organized by the American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, AAPI, in Hyderabad. He emphasized the need to adopt alternative medical practices and also focus on the research to benefit common people. India has also launched Ayushman Bharat, set to be the world's largest health insurance scheme under the ages of which 10 lakh people have already been received free treatment under the scheme. India's health sector has a number of competitive advantages, from a large pool of well-trained medical professionals to a flourishing pharma industry which excels in generic drug manufacturing to cost-effective and quality medical procedures. The countdown for India's second lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, is set to begin this evening. The launch of the landmark mission is scheduled to be at 2.43 p.m. tomorrow. It will zoom into space on board the rocket GSLV Mark III from the launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota. The booster GSLV Mark III, having a lift of mass of 640 tons, will initially carry Chandrayaan-2 to an elliptical orbit around the Earth. The revised timeline released by the ISRO says Chandrayaan-2 will encircle the Earth for 23 days. Gradually, it will be made to leave the Earth's sphere of influence by staging a series of maneuvers. On the 30th day of the launch, it will reach an orbit around the Moon. For 13 days, Chandrayaan-2 will be on a lunar-bound phase. The Chandrayaan-2 lander is scheduled to detach from its orbiter on the 43rd day and descend in slow motion. On the 48th day, it is expected to touch down on the south pole of the Moon that falls on September 7th. It will be followed by the rover emerging from the lander to venture out for the study of the lunar terrain. The mission life of the orbiter at a 100 km radius from the Moon would be a year. The lander and the rover will carry out experiments for a lunar day, which is equivalent to 14 days on the Earth. More from a correspondent. The historic Chandrayaan-2 mission coincides with the golden jubilee year of man's landing on the Moon and a little more than a decade after the successful Chandrayaan-1 mission. It was originally scheduled to begin its historic journey on July 15. However, an anomaly in the cryogenic upper stage of the launch vehicle forced the mission to be temporarily kept in abeyance. After finding the cause of the snag and plugging it swiftly, the launch has been rescheduled for tomorrow. The total flight duration has been brought down from 54 days to 48 days so that the date of landing on moon could be kept the same. Once the mission objectives are reached, India would become the fourth country ever to join the elite club of nations to have a lunar soft landing. The ISRO is proving its resilience by way of launching the mission in a short span of time after the initial hiccup. The homegrown technologies involved in the complex mission testify to the prowess of the nation in space science. Jai Singh, AAR News, Chennai. This is All in the Radio giving you the news for quick news updates. Follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The 11th biennial edition of the Defence Expo India 2020 is scheduled to be held for the first time in Uttar Pradesh capital Lucknow in February 2020. The fourth event beginning from the 5th of February will offer an excellent opportunity for the Indian defence industry to showcase its capabilities and promote its export potential. An official release said the main theme of the Defence Expo India 2020 will be India, the emerging defence manufacturing hub, and the focus will be on digital transformation of defence. The exhibition will also highlight the emergence of Uttar Pradesh as an attractive destination for investment in the defence sector and act as a platform for alliances and joint ventures in the defence industry. The Defence Expo will provide an opportunity to the major foreign original equipment manufacturers to collaborate with the Indian defence industry and help promote Make in India initiative of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Central Government is promoting the branding and production of Khadi in the country to boost its popularity and provide employment to people. Taking a cue from the initiative, Uttar Pradesh Government is planning to provide Khadi uniform made by solar spinning wheels to the children of primary schools. A report. Khadi is very soon going to be part of primary schools in Uttar Pradesh and it will be a visual delight to see school children clad in Khadi uniforms attending the classes. State government has started a pilot project in four districts 
and by the end of July, children will be provided khadi uniforms prepared by self-help groups. In an exclusive interview, Navneet Sahgal, Principal Secretary of Khadi and Village Industries Department of State, told AIR that if the project taken with the help of solar spinning wheels becomes successful, then very soon all primary schools will be provided khadi uniforms for the children. स्कूल के जो हमारे प्राइमरी और अपर प्राइमरी स्कूल के बच्चे हैं उनको हम लोग पायलट के तौर पे चार जिलों में और खादी बोर्ड जो है वो खादी की यूनिफॉर्म उपलब्ध करा रहा है तो वो सोलर से खादी से ही संभव है उसे क्या है कि प्रदेश का धन खर्च हो रहा है तो प्रदेश में ही रोजगार पैदा हो रहा है तीन करोड़ यूनिफॉर्म से हम कम से कम प्रदेश में एक से डेढ़ लाख लोगों को रोजगार और एडिशन दे सकते द इनिशिएटिव ऑफ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट विल नॉट ओनली पेव द वे फॉर खादी टू बिकम पार्ट ऑफ एवरी हाउस होल्ड बट विल ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट to lakhs of workers associated with the industry sushil chandra tiwari air news lucknow news just in lok janshakti party mp ram chandra paswan passed away new delhi today he was 57 he breathed his last at the ram manohar lohia hospital he represented samastipur lok sabha seat in bihar union home ministry has extended the residence permit of bangladeshi author taslima nasreen by one year A home minister official said a residence permit has been further extended till July 2020. Taslima has been getting residence permit on a continuous basis since 2004. In Japan, voting is underway for an election for the upper house of parliament. A total of 370 candidates are vying for 124 seats in the house. Media polls have indicated that Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's ruling bloc is expected to keep the majority. Mr Abe hopes to gain enough seats to boost chances for a constitutional revision his long cherished goal before his term ends in 2021 His ruling Liberal Democratic Party and his coalition partner Komeito will need a two-third majority to be able to begin the process of revising article 9 of the constitution that will further legitimize the military The upper house has a total of 245 seats about half of which are elected every 3 years In Ukraine polling is underway to elect a new parliament. Surveys suggest President Volodymyr Zelensky's Servant of the People party is expected to win the largest share of the votes. Mr Zelensky is seeking a strong mandate for his party to have a shot at delivering on his promise of transforming the war-torn country by tackling pervasive corruption and implementing reforms. Without the support of the powerful parliament, he would not be able to pass any reforms or change the cabinet of ministers. he inherited from former president petro poroshenko two sedition cases have been filed in dhaka against priya shah who had complained before the us president donald trump that 37 million people from the minority community have disappeared from bangladesh she sought protection for life and property of the minority community in a meeting with president trump shah's comment has created a political uproar in bangladesh priya shah is one of the organizing secretaries of bangladesh hindu bodha christian Oikya Parishad Monsoon has been vigorous over Kerala during the past few days a high alert has been sounded in the state more from a correspondent As heavy rainfall continues in Kerala Idiki and Kasaragod are the worst hit districts the low lying regions are flooded landslides are being reported from hilly regions Meanwhile body of a missing fisherman was found in Kollam search operations for two more persons continuing red alert is issued in six districts for coming few days as med department predicts heavy rain till july 24th relief camps and control rooms are active in all areas as sea is expected to remain rough with high waves and storms in these days warning issued to the fisher folks from venturing into the sea this is mayusha for ar news from tiruvannamalai In badminton the Indonesia Open women's single summit clash between Indian ace shuttler PV Sindhu and Japan's Akane Yamaguchi is underway in Jakarta. World number 5 Sindhu enjoys a dominant head to head record against Yamaguchi whom she has beaten in the last four meetings. The men's single title match will be played between Taiwan's Ten Chen Chou and Denmark's Anders Antonsen at 3 p.m. Indian Standard Time. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. Last rites of veteran Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister Sheila Dixit to be performed this afternoon with full state honors. Over 7 crore 32 lakh farmer families received first two installments of 2000 rupees each under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. Countdown for India's second lunar mission Chandrayaan 2 set to begin this evening. Launch of the landmark mission from Sri Harikota scheduled at 2:43 p.m. tomorrow. In Japan, voting underway for election for the upper house of parliament. 
and in badminton PV Sindhu faces Japan's Akani Yamaguchi in the women's singles final of Indonesia Open in Jakarta and for details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.com and with that we end the midday news